Welcome to session 12 of the KYTC Structural Inspection Level 1 class. This session is on concrete placement for bridge decks. So we've gotten to the day of the placement. We're ready to do our bridge deck pour. What two specification requirements need to have taken place before this ever happens? There are the pre-pour meeting and the dry run. Let's talk about the pre-pour meeting first. What is the pre-pour meeting? It's just that. It's a meeting that happens before we pour the bridge deck. At this meeting is going to have the project engineer, the contractor, the concrete supplier, the pump operator or contractor, all job site inspectors, and then anyone else that needs to be there that's going to contribute to the finished bridge deck. This could also be one of materials representative from your district or even the central office. So what needs to be discussed at the pre-pour meeting? We need to know what type of mix and what's our testing requirements. So where are we going to be doing our testing at? Uh, how much is going to be tested? How many cylinders are going to be made? And so on. Uh, where's the pump placement going to be at? Contractor and the pump operator are going to talk. We need pumps here, pumps here. This is beneficial because I've been on jobs before where the contractor will say, I want to pump here and here. And the pump operator say, well, that's not, won't work with the pumps that you have ordered. And then they'll go have a side conversation afterwards to discuss exactly what needs to be done. That's better to be discussed prior to the bridge deck pour than the day of. Oh, we also need to talk, what is the speed of delivery? Uh, if they want 80 yards an hour, 50 yards an hour, it's good to have your concrete supplier there so they can say, hey, we don't have enough trucks for that, or yes, we will be able to meet that. Uh, what is our air loss? What are we expecting? What is the truck delivery, delivery, routes, timing? It's good to know these things. What is our curing time and procedures? Are we doing this bridge deck in all one pour? If so, what is our retarder schedule? Is we want to make sure that all of our concrete sets at the same uh, rate and at the same time. We don't want pour at the first of the day setting up before the end of the day. We're going to get some major cracking in a bridge deck. Also, just anything and everything else that goes in. Uh, let's work out where is our possible headers low going to be at in case something does go wrong. What are our contingency plans? want to make sure that the dry run has happened. So the dry run is we are checking the top mat and bottom mat of steel for clearances. So the bid well itself gets set in place and is set to the grade and cross slope of the bridge. You work across the bridge checking at the rebar locations, making sure if it's two and a half inch clearance, we've got our two and a half clearance on top and you've got your one inch clearance on the bottom. The contractor will adjust this rail as need be to make sure we're within that toler 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 the tolerance that is allowed. The tolerance is plus or minus a quarter inch. During the dry run, you also need to check the rail. As the bidwell is moving across the rail, make sure it's not moving or shaking. It's not what you want is when you see one of these bidwells fall off the rail during a deck pour. So we've gotten to it. Out in front of the bidwell, all deck and formwork must be wet. We don't want it dry. Concrete loves water. So to get a good bond with the steel that needs to be sprayed down with the hose, there's always a garden hose on the deck. That garden hose is not for spraying the concrete, it's for spraying the steel and the deck pans out in front of the concrete. It doesn't matter if you as the inspector does this, if the contractor does it, as long as it's done. The steel and everything must be wet to make sure we get a good bond with the concrete. But you don't want any standing water. That is a no-no. It's going to cause weak concrete at that location. The finishing machine is set to the grade and cross slope of the deck. Said, talked about that. We checked that in the dry run. It moves ahead roughly six inches at a pass. It will not finish the last six to eight inches next to the rail. Uh, you see the gentleman over there on the rail with a float finishing that in. That also works well because that's our gutter location and it gets a smooth finish for drainage. Uh, the augers in front of the bidwell unit move any excess concrete away and then the twin rolling drums, as you see here, finish the concrete. And then behind it, we have a pan or a burlap drag that removes any last marks. Uh, the contracting contract personnel out in front will have rakes uh, to pull any excess concrete away from the augers as they pile it up. So after it's been placed, if there's any water that needs to be added, 
it needs to be added by a misting type sprayer. Anymore, you're seeing contractors have uh, pressure washers or so up on top of the bid well. These are great because as you push it, it sends the pressurized water out as a mist and it just falls down onto the deck. You don't want big puddles of water or anything like that because you might be able to finish it and make the concrete look pretty, but it will quickly lead to spalling and we're going to have issues long term with the bridge. So you're going to see one to two walk bridges following the finished machine. These walk bridges help in, they aid in performing the final finishing. So doing the final uh, drag and with the 10 foot straight edge, they allow the spraying of the curing compound and then placing the wet burlap or curing blankets and then plastic back behind the bid well. So before all that happens, we need to be checking stuff. What is this in this guy's hand? This is used to measure reinforcement cover height during concrete placement, or you want to, might call them wet checks. So they're going up at the bid well itself at the finishing roller, poking a hole to hit steel, and they're wanting to see, do we have that two and a half inch range for steel clearance? Not all concrete placements are done with a concrete pump truck. If it's a small enough or short enough bridge that they can reach it with their uh, crane bucket, they're going to do that. The country, it saves them money. The pump truck is an added expense. Make sure we're doing our testing properly. Uh, make sure we're not letting concrete free fall from any more than five feet. But make sure we're on them as they're getting filled and uh, doing finishing across. This needs to get vibrated in front of the bid well and make sure it gets uh, accounted for just like it would with the finishing machine. Uh, make, note here that this reinforcement is covered with plastic. That is, we want to keep that clean. This is in a phased construction pour. The contractors are going to have to do another phase of this. We don't want any loose concrete, curing compound, or anything like that. That's going to affect bond for the next phase when we place our deck car concrete. So after you've already got two loads of concrete on the bridge deck is not the time to find out the bid well won't work. I say over and over when I teach this class, questions are your best friend. Before you ever start putting on there, ask the contractor, hey, have you started the bid well? Is it running? Hey, have you used it? Is it advancing forward and backwards? Make sure we got it. We can't control what the contractor is doing, but we can work together to make sure we have a good final product. Note, all these construction workers are walking in the concrete. Everywhere that they're walking, the guy in the red sweatshirt is going to need to go in with the vibrator and hit those spots. If not, that's going to be a void. The finished machine will finish over it, but we'll have a weak spot underneath everywhere they're walking. This is what we're looking for. You see enough men out there and women that can be pulling this concrete back. They're getting the augers. The guy with the vibrator is hitting the vibrator. The pump operator is putting it down uniformly in front of the bid well adequately distributing the weight across the beams and the bridge in its entirety. Normally, on a bridge deck pour, will probably be the most contracting personnel you'll see on the bridge at any given time. They bring multiple crews out to make sure this is an all-hands-on-deck for them. I will say the same thing for us. It's an all-hands-on-deck for the inspectors as well. I like to see at least three to five inspectors on a bridge deck pour. Less than that, you are really working hard. I want two or three people for testing concrete, one person watching behind the bid well, and then somebody at the truck taking tickets. So the spec 6010309 recently changed. It used to say you needed to have this double 90 nozzle on the end of the pump. That is an OSHA hazard. You can see that just ready to take somebody's kneecaps out. It got changed to say, when pumping, equip the delivery pipe with a nozzle having a restricting device at the discharge end. This is just something that's going to slow that concrete down. We don't want it in a free fall from 50 feet in the air down to our bridge deck. This helps avoid segregation or any separation of the aggregates. We don't want aggregates going straight to the bottom and paste coming to the top. It also aids in any keeping from displacement of the reinforcement. Note there, if you are seeing displacement of the reinforcement, tell the contractor immediately. We should have noted this during the dry run, but if we're just now catching it, they need better support. That steel needs to be supported until the concrete adequately, adequately cures. We sample concrete at the point of discharge. This is not at the truck. This is not at the easiest point for the inspector. It's a point of discharge. We want to know the properties of the concrete going in the bridge deck. 
So here you see the inspector with the wheelbarrow. He's ready for the hose to come to him. He'll get his sample and take it off the end of the bridge. Uh, we used to sample some right on the bridge deck. We would have uh, plywood on the deck and do all of our sampling there. Uh, you can do it on the other side of the barrier wall. You just don't want to reconfigure the pump. So the, barrier, the wheelbarrow needs to be at where they're placing concrete. If it's boomed up, we want to make sure we're getting a sample with it boomed up. If it's boomed straight out, we want to get a sample with it boomed straight out. It just has to make sure that we're getting the concrete at the same general area as it's getting placed in the bridge. So your final finishing is with a 10 foot straight edge. We want to make sure we don't have any bumps or valleys in our deck. That's what everybody's going to notice as they ride over it. So we require this straight edge. And then behind that, they texture the bridge deck with a spring rake and the steel tines. This add friction to the deck to help keep people on there. And then we apply a curing compound. Note areas such as the barrier wall, reinforcing steel, and if it's phase construction, any other phases, we don't want curing compound to get on it because it is a bond wrecker. It must get cleaned if they get any curing compound on that. Note here, the state has kind of switched to doing some deck sealers. If you have a deck sealer set up on your bridge, the contractor does not want to put down curing compound and we are allowing that. If you have a deck sealer set up, the contractor needs to continually keep the bridge deck moist until they can keep it covered. This will allow uh, to prevent any cracking or drying out, same as what the curing compound does. But once we move into the seven day wet cure that's specified, that's going to give us a good cure on our deck. So after you get it timed, the curing compound or kept moist, then you apply the two layers of wet burlap with plastic or curing blankets to make sure we're getting that seven day wet cure that's required. This burlap isn't ready. It needs to have 24 hours of soaking. This is what we're looking for if using burlap. But I have not seen very many contractors using burlap recently. Most people are using burlene or any other new brand or type of curing blankets. It must be noted that this is a continual operation. It takes a good size crew. Concrete is placed at one end and we need to make sure it stays plastic until we get it down at the other end. A tight operation means a good bridge. We want all hands on board to make sure that we have got this final product done and done correctly. I've said several times we want to keep the deck wet for seven days. If it's in the winter or cooler months, make sure we've got uh, temperature checks in place. Uh, the contractor can pull it away from the barrier wall. That way they can get in there and tie steel, set conduit, anything that needs to be done. Just at the end of the day, push it back. Your job as the inspector is to check it. Make sure it's wet. That Berlin uh, curing blankets or a burlap need to be wet. This is usually done with soaker hoses or somebody coming out and soaking them. That seven days can be cut back if you have breaks and approved by the engineer, but only the engineer can cut that short of seven days. So your job as the inspector is to kind of be at all places. That's why I like three to five people on a deck pour. We need to make sure concrete's going down right in front of the bid well, but we also need to make sure it's getting finished correctly behind. And then it's a really good idea to have somebody at the truck checking concrete tickets before it goes into the pump truck. Lastly, make sure before you've even got to bridge deck pour, you have reviewed section 601 and 609 of the spec book. This allows, that gives you knowledge of anything that's going to go on. That way, if something does go wrong, you've already read the specifications and you have an idea of what's required. Make sure the bridge joints are open for the temperature of the placement. Most bridge joints are set at 60 degrees for their desired width. So if it's hotter than that, you need to decrease that width or cooler than 60, you need to increase the width. We'll talk about that in a later video. Watch the weather forecast. We don't want to be doing this if a downpour rain is projected or any rain. That's on the contractor. They get to choose when they do it. We can't direct them to stop because of rain, but we can make sure everything must be done as per the requirements. We don't like concrete decks placed in January, February, but we've had some good warm winter days here lately uh, that have been allowing it. If it is, make sure you just check the forecast. If we've got a long-term weather in the 40s or 50s, we know we're going to get curing. And then we will be doing pachometer testing once it's cured and cleared off, double checking to make sure we're getting the steel reinforcement cover that we require. All right, any questions you might have with this, leave them in the comment box. As always, I look forward to having you in class. 
Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, hit this uh, like button, subscribe to the channel, and look for more videos to come. Have a great day.